purpose of the terrorist definitions in the Department of Homeland Security report entitled Right-Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling Resurgence in Radicalization and Recruitment, and the DHS lexicon take on a new meaning. A larger, coordinated, backdoor attack on constitutional rights emerges when you consider them with a new bill from Representative Peter King of New York. Introduced April 29th of 2009 is a bill, H.R. 2159, called Denying Firearms and Explosives to Dangerous Terrorists Act of 2009. The correlation between this legislative action and the DHS policy becomes somewhat ominous when you consider parts of the bill. The bill, H.R. 2159, states in part, the Attorney General the authority to deny the sale, delivery, or transfer of a firearm, or the issuance of a firearms or explosives license or permit to dangerous terrorists. If the Attorney General determines that the transferee is known or appropriately suspected to be or have been engaged in conduct constituting in preparation for, in aid of, or related to terrorism, or providing material support thereof, and the Attorney General has a reasonable belief that the prospective transferee may use a firearm in connection with terrorism. Supporters of the bill are the author, Representative Peter King, Republican of New York, and his bill's co-sponsors, Caroline McCarthy, Democrat of New York, Mike Castle, Republican of Delaware, Jim Moran, Democrat of Virginia, Charles Rangel, Democrat of New York, who would have guessed, Mark Kirk, Democrat of Illinois, and Chris Smith, Republican of New Jersey. On the face of it, this bill sounds like an innocuous law that will only make us safer. But as Benjamin Franklin said, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty or safety. If you are in a category in the DHS report that is appropriately suspected of being a terrorist, this bill will allow any Attorney General to deny you of your Second Amendment right. The DHS report classifies pro-life which is 51% of the American people in the latest survey, supporters of limited government, supporters of the Second Amendment, military veterans, and people who don't apologize for America being number one in the world as potential right-wing terrorists. If you are in that list, let your congressperson know what you think of their attempt to backdoor the removal of your constitutional rights. Apparently, some of them do not seem to understand who works for who. Representative Caroline McCarthy of New York, in response to recent gun control defeats, proclaimed that ordinary Americans and gun control advocacy groups are consistently outflanked by gun owners groups like the National Rifle Association. What she fails to realize is that the NRA consists of her employers, the ordinary American. Representative Lynn Woolsey of California, upset at her fellow employees of the ordinary American for losses of gun control legislation said, it has to do with being afraid they'll lose their election if they stand up against guns. That's right, Representative Woolsey. If you do not do what your employers want, you get fired. Protect your rights from being chipped away. Remember, they are from the government and they are trying to help you. Consider also the title of Senator, the title of Representative, the title of President. They are not the titles of rulers. They are the titles of service service to you, the people. The Second Amendment, part of the Constitution 
in the Bill of Rights is not just a right to hunt. It is not just a right to self-defense from criminals. It is a duty for each person to keep so that tyranny is always kept at bay. Just having this right ensures all of your other rights. Without it, none of your other rights will last. In the Constitution of the United States of America, in the Bill of Rights Second Amendment, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed.